Well, it's the 12th of January, 2023, and we're just waking up to the news that the veteran British blues guitarist, and, uh, well, excellent guitarist, Jeff Beck has just died. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to talk about Jeff Beck, because everybody else is talking about Jeff Beck. I'm going to talk about another blues guitarist, or general guitarist, although this was more of a blues guitarist. And the link is that the Jeff Beck group, formed in 1967, I think, had its drummer, a guy I used to know in Putney, um, a very interesting guy called Mickey Waller, who was a very eccentric character, and but he played drums on some amazing albums and he was like one of the best drummers in the world. He was the drummer on Rod Stewart's solo albums and um, eventually he taught himself law, believe it or not, and he took various people to court including Rod Stewart and I think um, Rod Stewart's manager whose name I can't remember now and he got thousands of pounds in at royalties. So anyway that was um, Mickey Waller but Mickey Waller when I first knew him also played drums for a full local act in the West London area, South West London called the Sammy Mitchell Blues Band. It's the worst old feeling. Ooh, never must have People like Jeff Beck knew who Sammy Mitchell was. People like Rod Stewart knew who Sammy Mitchell was, because Sammy Mitchell was the best blues guitarist I have ever seen in my life. There's hardly anything about him on YouTube. He hasn't even got a Wikipedia entry. It's crazy. Sammy was born in Liverpool in 1950, and he died there in 2006, aged just 56. He was discovered in the Troubadour, small folk club in West London, by none other than Long John Baldry. Some kind of talisman. It could take the form of different things, whether it be a shrunken head or, or some other lucky charm. And Rod Stewart. Who took him under their wing. Now, he appears on Rod Stewart's album, Every Picture Tells a Story. He played with The Who and things like that, but no one ever knew who he was. And yet, when he was playing in places like the King's Head in Fulham and the Half Moon Putney, they would be absolutely packed. He was one of the biggest acts and one of the nicest people. He was born in Liverpool. He moved to London. His father was a, an Hawaiian guitarist in like a, an orchestra type band that um, played standards and things. And he learnt guitar from him. He moved to London. People in the know knew who Sam Mitchell was. He was one of the top acts on the circuit in that area. But I can remember back then when I was his manager, which was a very um, loose thing, and I was absolutely hopeless. I was, don't forget, I was actually quite young, probably in my 20s then. The strange thing was that the places he normally played at, like the King's Head in Fulham or West London, where I first encountered him, Fulham, Putney, Chiswick maybe, Hounslow, even Richmond, round there, Wimbledon, you would pack it out. I mean, the Sam Mitchell Blues Band was one of the top names up there with, like, at the time, it would be Gina Washington, the Ram Jam Band. Steve Marriott was playing then. Dr. Feelgood had obviously played and gone, and they were playing bigger places. But it was like, there was a very thriving circuit. At that time, the Sam Mitchell Blues Band was up there with the top name. But I can remember booking him into places outside the area. For example, I think he did a show here for me in Walthamstow somewhere, where basically 22 people showed up on a Saturday night. Well, the pub landlord went absolutely spare and it refused to pay and all that. And we had a bit of a thing. And um, Mickey Waller, I seem to remember, took, um, took it upon himself to um, tell him off. Um, anyway, see, at the time it was a total catastrophe because Sam never had any money. Eventually he got so fed up with being ignored and having no money, but he fell in love with this Danish woman and they moved to Denmark. And apparently in Denmark, I still was in touch with him. Don't forget, back then there was no internet and things, so it's all done by letter and the odd phone call. He, he was in a band and came quite big in Denmark. But unfortunately he got ill and moved back to Liverpool where he died quite young. And as I say, there's not even a mention of him in Wikipedia. I hope that somebody watches this and says, oh yes, Sam Mitchell, he was great. I'll try and find some footage to put up here. With YouTube, there's obviously the danger that somebody's going to claim they own the copyright and have your video taken down. So you've got to be very careful about what you put up on YouTube. I don't know if you know that. That's why my videos spare on music. So if you want to join my patron, by all means, please uh, chip in. And if I get enough people paying my Patreon, 
Patreon, Patreon, I don't know, then I will start licensing more stuff. But at the moment, it's just me forking out, doing all the work, sweating around, you know, getting all the, all, all the greed, because people don't like these, you know. I find it very strange. If you like it, please like it, by the way. Subscribe, follow me, etc. Because there's a lot of people who just don't like my stuff, who make a point of putting up comments, sending me messages. The most recent one was somebody who had never met Steve Marriott, but took issue at what I said about him and basically threatened to uh, kill me, which is a bit strange, isn't it? Don't you think? I think it's a bit strange. But anyway, hopefully he won't. If he might do, but what the hell, eh? So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. When I'll, I might do another one about these unknown blues people, although there's another guy, actually, who no one seems to know about. I'll give you a clue. I booked him a few times for the Rhythm Festival. Unfortunately, Sam Mitchell was already dead by the time the Rhythm Festival started. <laughs>